Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my next podcast. Uh, my guest today is Daniel Himmel, a VP of Cleary X. Uh, this is a technological subsidiary of Cleary and Gottlieb, one of the biggest uh, and leading US law firms. Hi, Daniel. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to ask you how uh, about the approach of big law firms toward AI explosion. How, how it looks? Sure. So I think um, in order to properly answer that question, it's probably helpful to give a bit of background as to how kind of ClearyX came to be, so the, the company that I work for, and how we kind of operate in, in relation to the firm. So we are a wholly owned subsidiary, but we op operate independent. And so while we are affiliated with the firm and owned by the firm and, and we work closely with them, uh, we are kind of developing our own approach to the use of AI in our day-to-day -day practice in parallel to the firm. So I can speak to both. Um, generally with the firm, um, I think as most people are aware, firms are exploring the space, but there's uh, quite a, kind of a large uh, legacy operation that makes it a little bit hard to be flexible and nimble when there's new technology and integrated. So I would say what we're doing day to day is using AI in its kind of current form. So we have one of my focuses is on kind of streamlining the transactional process, a traditionally kind of a bloated and, and inefficient process that you know, most, most firms are involved in, but there's traditionally been a, a better way. Um, so we are already using AI kind of state of the art market leading artificial intelligence that takes the form of contract review software. So it's not necessarily the generative AI that's um, kind of at the forefront of most, most legal minds these days, but it is a traditional, well, as much as AI can be traditional form of AI that we're, we're using regularly. I think because we are a small organization with the mandate to innovate and without the kind of confines of a traditional firm, we're allowed to explore the use of the generative AI tool. So we're already starting to do that and we test it every day. So we're able to take the kind of what's publicly available and try to weave it into our workflow. And so whether that's transactional work, whether it's contract management work, whether it's just kind of internal operational matters where we're trying to run an efficient business, but it can help us kind of streamline some HR pro pro processes or perhaps some uh, people management processes. Uh, is your work implemented already in a law firm or it's just in your small lab, in your small organization? Our day-to-day -day work at the moment, which is often in the transactional support space, it's already implemented. We use AI to review contracts, to assist us in reviewing contracts every single day. And um, so our, our, our team is in a variety of different uh, AI powered tools. So um, the firm uses it as well, but they kind of rely on us to be, again, to be the testing ground, to be at the forefront of that, to be the experts in these tools. We hope beyond just the tools that we have today that we, we again, stay at the forefront and, and continue to explore and test other AI tools beyond the ones we have. Uh, and, and do you see the lawyer with AI is, is more efficient than without? How, how is the efficiency? Yeah, so in our space, absolutely. Um, what we've kind of done is, is attacked the lowest hanging fruit of traditional legal practice, right? That the kind of repetitive, voluminous work that is requires the expertise of legal practitioners because there's always nuance and there's legal risk um, and there's lots of stake in some of these uh, quite significant transactions. But the the majority of the work is kind of is repetitive and just pat, kind of pattern recognition. And so that's something that the these tools are very good at. And so what we try to do is have a hybrid model where the tool plays a really important role in kind of generating that efficiency, reducing the turnaround time, um, or sorry, increasing the turn, turnaround time, time in terms of us getting it to the client faster, um, improving accuracy. Um, but we always have the oversight of the individual because there is, as great as these tools are, the, the, the accuracy is not perfect. I don't think it ever will be. And so, and the, the, the stakes are quite high with these types of transactions. Uh, would you recommend any courses? Uh, are there any at all? I, so, so I, I think there's a lot of really great theoretical courses, which I think are really interesting for people that just have um, the interest in that technical space. What we do, I would say it's probably what would be more relevant is like a, a practical application course, where how do you integrate these tools into your day-to-day -day practice? Because we're not looking to replace. We're not looking to entirely revamp the way that, that laws practice. We're looking to supplement it, augment it. So I think practical courses where they teach you kind of what a day, day in the life of, day in the life is for a lawyer and how they can weave technology. And I think that would be the most relevant to a kind of career path that would evolve into something like what we're doing or something adjacent to what we're doing. Okay, great, Daniel. Thank you for, for this discussion and good luck with this unique model of, of uh, technological subsidiary of big law firm having its own clients. Good luck and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.